What's up guys? Welcome to the video. This is Ryan Knows Tech from techinform.us and after a long time after all the requests I've gotten a crap load, we're finally going to go ahead and do the desk tour and setup tour of 2011. This is January. Today's actually the 17th. It's Monday. I would say happy Monday, but in recent news it appears that Steve Jobs has temporarily, at least we can hope, stepped down from Apple CEO due to uh, some health issues. He's taken some time off again like he did, I think it was about two years ago. So uh, the best thoughts to him and his family, and we'll hope to see him back shortly. But in the meantime and in between time, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I'm working with this year. So I've essentially commandeered my uh, living room here that nobody uses as my uh, personal office. So that's kind of nice. It's right off the foyer here in the house. And it's Come in here, it's pretty comfortable carpet, you know. So here's the desk, right in front of the windows here. I love this. I used to actually have it uh, behind me right now, but I've got in front of these three big bay windows that face out the front of the house. I've been waiting so long to do this because of the weather. It, uh, today's the first day we've really seen any sun since probably several, several, several weeks. And the lighting probably couldn't be a whole lot worse, having uh, some sunshine uh, off the bright white snow and then a dark office in here. But, you know, we'll do what we can. So this is the desk I've been using. It's made of wood, and I like it except over here, which we'll see more of shortly, where my magic mouse goes, right about there. You can see that it's kind of worn through whatever coating they've put on here. I don't even know if it's real wood, and uh, I haven't been able to get that out or put anything on top of it. Don't know where the desk came from, don't know how much it cost, but it's got plenty of drawers in it, so that's been nice. Now the computers, we'll start off with that, I guess, in here. Um, you probably remember this one, if you've been watching my channel for, wow, it's been over a year now. January 11th, 2010, I ordered my first MacBook Pro. This one, this is the mid-2009 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, the 4 gigs of RAM, the 250 gig drive. NVIDIA 9400M graphics, it's been a great computer. I used it until June of 2010 when my parents were looking to get a Mac and I just, uh, we kind of did a little switcheroo. They took this one and then I got this one, the mid-2000, or the early 2010, excuse me, uh, MacBook Pro with the 2.6 Core 2 Duo, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM and a 320 gig drive. This is actually the 5400 RPM in here right now. But uh, coming this Wednesday, stay tuned for the unboxing setup review uh, installation. The 320 gig Western Digital Scorpio Black. It's supposedly the fastest notebook hard drive available that's not an SSD. I only went 320 gigs since it's one platter. It'll be faster than a 500, 640, 750 gig drive or even the big terabyte which I think Western Digital does offer. So this is the machine that I use. I usually just keep it in clamshell mode right here. I've got my power plugged in. This goes out to my monitor. It's mini display to DVI. We'll be taking a look at the monitor in a minute. Here's the wire for this guy. I don't know if the camera can see. No, I can't. Move that up. That big white snowball here is called the Blue Snowball microphone, appropriately. It's 100 bucks. It's a fantastic condenser microphone with three different settings on it. I absolutely love it for recording. Use it for all kinds of stuff. Back over here, we have a USB port out coming to that black thing with the Ferrari sticker on it. This is an, HT, an HP Simple Save 1 terabyte hard drive. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it does back up every video that I make. is on there and encrypted and password protected and all the fun stuff. So uh, if something should ever happen with YouTube, I can uh, restore them. Another cord over here coming out of the computer is the cord that goes over there to the iPad. That just, uh, when I want to charge that, sync it, whatever, I plug that in, it's on an extension cable, and then I don't have to move the dock over. And then this final cord here is the 3.5mm audio for the Bose Companion 2 Series 2 speakers that I use. And uh, if they didn't sound just as good as the Companion 3s, I would have upgraded them by now. I've used both. There's a little bit more bass out of the Companion 3 since it has its own subwoofer. But for like $250 less, these are much more valuable in terms of you know value than, the, than I think 3s are. We've got this NJB here, which stands for something. I don't really know. It's an automotive LLC over here in Ohio. They work on Ferraris and stuff. That's, I think, a Testarossa mirror on there. Just keep a lot of pens in here and uh, flash memory. Little thing to use. Um, I used to use just like a paperclip tool to get the CD drive out of a computer. But I don't really use PCs much more, so I could probably get rid of that. The thing hanging off to the right of this speaker here. And here, these are the Bose in-ear two or in-ear ones. I don't have the in-ear twos yet. This is the mobile package, so they have this little thing right here. 
Uh, real, real nice headphones. These are 130 bucks. I would definitely buy them again, and I'm probably going to have to because they don't last real long. To the right of that, that's a Western Digital Black, or uh, not black, a Western Digital, well, it is black, but, you know, it isn't the black series. Western Digital My Passport for Mac. It's 500 gigs. I only paid, like, 60-some dollars for it. Real small, real light, and I originally bought this when I got the new MacBook Pro so I could back up everything with Time Machine on the original MacBook Pro here. Back it up with Time Machine, get this going, and then install um, all my stuff back from Time Machine. And I cannot stress enough how beautifully that worked, and that's definitely what I'm going to be doing with my new hard drive. So down here, these are my methods of input, I guess. This is the Apple wireless keyboard. It's the aluminum one. I really like it. It stays pretty clean. Real nice keyboard. It's $70. It's pretty heavy. It's very well built. My only complaint is the F5 and F6 keys are blank since they didn't offer this with a backlit keyboard. I would much rather utilize all of this space up here instead of only this much for batteries. Put two more batteries in there and uh, let it be backlit. I don't care. I'll put batteries in it when I want it. Up here, not the best thing I've ever bought, but it is nice. The Magic Trackpad. I believe it's also $70. My complaint is it just is not as accurate as something like the Magic Mouse, which I use all the time. Real accurate pointing. I love it for design and Photoshop. I could never do Photoshop on this or the trackpad in the computer. I think it's just... It really depends on what kind of user you are if you want to buy it. But if you're the right user, it's a great product. Up from there, you're going to find the monitor. This is the Asus V232H, I believe. It's 1920 by 1080. It's got SPDIF. It's got HDMI, VGA, DVI. Great monitor. It's got built-in speakers, which sound like crap. Doesn't have a webcam. It's made out of the black, piano black, plastic finish. For 240 50 60 something like that, dollars, it's not, not bad at all. The unscreened display, as a lot of people have commented, is not the easiest thing to use, but colors look great. And uh, I wish I still had my mini display to HDMI thing, but uh, that broke. So I'm just using DVI right now. Below the monitor in the right-hand corner there is probably the cheapest and nicest thing you can buy from Apple for the money. You can buy... Yeah, that makes sense. It is 20 bucks. It's the Apple uh, wireless remote, I guess. And you can use this to control your volume if I didn't have the other MacBook Pro in front of it. Uh, notice on the screen there the volume going up. But my speakers are muted, so you can't hear it. Real thin, real nice. It's definitely a lot better than the original Apple remote that Apple supplied, which is made out of plastic, and it cracked all over the place. So don't use that real often, but I have one with the Apple TV that, of course, you have to use real often. On the right-hand side of the monitor, you're going to find the other speaker. Uh, again, Bose Companion 2 Series 2. It's just got a volume knob here, headphone out, which is nice. And the back, there's just a big bass port. You have two RCA ins a line to go over to the second speaker, and your power connector. Real simple design. I've got a light. I think it's a stiffle. And uh, here's the iPad. It's the first generation, obviously. iPad, regular Wi-Fi, only 16 gig. I went with, uh, screen brightness is way down, but I went with the 16 gig. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I never expected on keeping it. It looked like something that was really cool. I didn't know if, if it was going to be something I'd want to hold on to and use a lot. And I, I ended up doing it. I liked it so much. So that's good. Down here is pretty much the only PC left in the house that uh, is used a whole lot, at least by me. Um, on top of that are the Bose QuietComfort 15s. I use these all the time for editing. There's so much... Uh, I love not being able to hear everybody running around the house and the cord for that. Then this is the Lenovo ThinkPad Z61T. Obviously a business machine, but the Z series was their... Um, media-oriented business machine, I guess you could say. Meaning it has an SD card reader, it has a webcam up here, it has better speakers. It just isn't so uh, geared for business as most other ThinkPads were. However, it still does have a fingerprint reader, uh, has your little thing up here, DVD reader, you know, 3 USB 2.0. It's the Core Duo, Intel Core Duo, not Core 2. 2 gigahertz, 4 gigs DDR2. I think it's a 100 gig, 7200 RPM drive. If I used it a lot more, I would probably upgrade it, but I really just use it for overnight uploads of the vlogs that I've been doing. Just got that first drawer opened up right down here. I'd, a lot of crap in there, so I'm not going to open it all the way right now. But this is just a box for the Bose Companion 3s. And a piece of technology I rarely use anymore. That's not just because I'm a Mac user. It is not the best mouse that you can find. I really thought it was at the time. The Logitech MX Performance Bluetooth. Uh, it's a dark field mouse. When it works, it is great. It is like magical. It's tracking. is incredible. But it just goes to sleep, and then it doesn't wake up until you move it around for 10 seconds. Very obnoxious. Something I think 
somebody else in my YouTube uh, subscription box that's going to be getting soon is the Blue Snowflake microphone. I ordered the Snowball, which is over there, and they sent me this. I complained about it. They sent me the Snowball and told me I could keep this. So this has been sitting around collecting dust as I rarely use it, but it is a great microphone. What else in that drawer? Well, the old pair of uh, Bose in-ears. These aren't the mobile version. I think they still work, but I got the mobile version when I got my iPhone 4, which I completely skipped over, as I just realized. That's the black, well, the only iPhone 4. In black, uh, 32 gig, I got that on launch day. Great, uh, great pair of headphones and a great phone, of course. Checkbook, checks, basic stuff, banking information below these papers, and everything on top are flight and hotel information for the upcoming trip we're going to be taking in March. Leaving from here to Chicago, Chicago to L.A., then down to San Diego and Vegas and back right after spring break. So that, that week, the 19th through the 27th, there will be no tech videos. It's a vacation. I'm going to let it be a vacation. I'm vacating, so don't expect any emails and stuff to be answered, but we'll be talking about that in a later date. For lack of better terms, these drawers are full of crap. Those are all wires and cables, most of which I do use, like a USB hub just for a microphone, an iPod or something, since the MacBook Pro only has two USB ports. This is the charging cable for the iPad, HDMI cords, this is a 120 gigabyte, I think it's a 10,000 RPM hard drive designed by F.A. Porsche. I've actually never used this. I got it in a trade for somebody. It's got FireWire, I think that's 400, mini USB and a power cable. I should start using that shortly, I suppose. Then I also bought this, probably the biggest waste of money on any Apple product I've ever bought, which is a 30-pin connected to a VGA for the iPad, which is really only good for streaming uh, pictures or movies or anything like that, no apps work or anything, anything fun. Also in here, I should say, Kenan Rolson, the KRVR, did a review on this. It's the Tumi Mobile Power Pack. Super nice. I think it's $150 from Tumi. This is the black one. He's got the red one. And it says it's really just a USB. It's a battery with a USB power thing on it. So you plug in an iPhone. It doesn't work with the iPad because it uses twice the power to charge the, the uh, iPhone for. The iPhone does. But you can plug in a, an iPhone, an iPod. Push this button and charge it. It's not only Apple products, it's pretty much any phone. It comes with a crap load of adapters. Real nice product from Tumi. Down there is more crap. I've got the BMW onboard navigation system, the DVDs. This is the one back from 2000. I've got the one in there from 05 now. Then I have documentation for both MacBook Pros. I have extension cords, charging cables for some of the old PCs, HP documentation, all that kind of garbage. That bottom drawer is full of bills and... Uh, Stuff from school and actually car wash towels. I use different ones on my car. Up here, uh, this is the old Dell Latitude CPIA. It is essentially worthless. It's 333 megahertz. Box for the Oakleys, my unboxing knife, two bumpers in white and black. I just switch those up and back and forth for the iPhone. Then this is a Rolex Datejust book that my grandfather got somewhere a long time ago. I don't really know why that's in there because I don't have a Datejust. Down here we've got batteries, the little box which I probably don't need for the Apple remote, a garage door opener, and valve stem caps. Down here is our my PC homeboy nerd crap software that I don't use anymore, but I still have it. I just don't have activation keys for it. I've got Windows 7 Pro. I've got Windows Vista Home Premium. That's a keeper. Then I've got four gigs of DDR3 RAM that came in the. It actually came in my new MacBook Pro from June that uh, I upgraded to 8 gig right away, so it's never been used. If anybody would like to make an offer on this RAM, I think I'd be pretty decent with it. I can ship it out, but it's never used. DDR3, you know, 1066 megahertz. Each stick is 2 gigs. It should work in any DDR3 machine. There's Windows 7 Ultimate. I've got a whole bunch more Microsoft software, blank DVDs, CDs, more software, and uh, back in the olden days, I've got some old Tech Cores business cards in here. Could be using as firewood shortly. Down on the bottom, that's yet another crap drawer full of wires and cables and such that I really just don't use anymore. And in more forgetfulness, I forgot to go over this. It's the HP Wireless Elite keyboard, and it is hella thin. I love this keyboard, except I don't use it anymore since I'm not much of a PC user. But super thin, real nice to type on. It's not backlit either, but uh, very nice keyboard from HP. I think it was like uh, $50 or $75 or not too bad. Also in that drawer, I forgot to take a look at this. This is the old camera I used on the James R. Schultz channel way back in the day. It's the Kodak 
M1063. It's 10.3 megapixels. Terrible at video, but not too bad at photos at all. So I'll probably take this out west. Then again, the iPhone does a great job as well, plus it geotags it, so maybe not. To the left of all of this stuff, you're going to find this chest. On top of this chest, I keep some dress shoes. To the left, in the middle, are Ferrari Red Pumas. I love those shoes. Great grip. Um, mine do actually have carbon fiber soles, as I found out recently. I've got a whole bunch of hats on top. I guess we can move in and uh, do a little snooping in my own stuff. And then I should mention to the right, these boots are awesome. If you live in Ohio in snow, it's like studded snow tires. They're incredible. I've got this Ferrari hat. I don't remember. Actually, I think I got that in Columbus when we went to see the Ferrari California down there. I bought one of those. My uh, good friend, the KRVR on YouTube, picked this up for me at a Ferrari store in Italy. Real nice. I got this at BMW in, I want to say Columbus, pretty sure. Then I got that at the Cleveland Auto Show 2010 up at the IX Center. Nautica, don't wear that much more. I got it uh, about two years ago. And uh, Team Still, if anybody's, uh, I use uh, Still Leaf Equipment, I guess, in the fall. And uh, I got a new blower once and they gave me a hat, so I kept it. In this corner of the room, I've got a table dedicated to Apple boxes. And now, I don't have every box I have uh, from Apple on that table because this entire chest here is full of boxes. And I, and I would open it up, but it's just, I mean, boxes to pretty much every electronic I've ever bought, excluding the monitor and the speakers and the big stuff. It's all in there. In case they ever sell it, I do have the boxes for it. So here, I mean, we've got two MacBook Pro boxes over here. This is the iPad box, Magic Trackpad, Nano, um, Third gen, 8 gig black, Apple TV, iPhone 4, iPod Touch 4, iPod Touch 2G, Airport Extreme, iLife, iWork, and um, Mobile Me. Good thing I wasn't being quizzed. And then this thing is an ancient, let's see, 30 gig iPod classic, I guess. It doesn't work. It's got a broken screen. Um, somebody found it somewhere, so I got that. And uh, over there is the black Nano that I don't really use anymore, but it does still work. Above the couch over here, I actually got this for Christmas from my aunt. This is a uh, the BMW pre-war years, and it's got all these different cars on it. We'll see if we can get up a little bit closer here without getting too much glare. It goes all the way back to the 1929 up there, the red one. I can't even pronounce that because it's in German. Keeps going, keeps going down there to the 1939 BMW 327, so that's pretty interesting. On this table back here, I've got a whole bunch of Ferrari booklets. I think I picked most of these up when we went down to Columbus, again, to see that California. I've got the Ferrari product range in here. This is relatively outdated. Uh, they've got the 430, the 599, and the 612 in there. The Ferrari Panari, which, uh, Panerai, actually. They're watches. I'm actually wearing the Panerai right now. But this is, we got this at Mon Jewelers in Beechwood, Ohio. It goes over Panerai's range of watches, the, their Ferrari line, which are super expensive, but quite nice. Below that, I've got a 16M, the Ferrari 16M Scuderia Spider book, and then something below that that they gave us down in Columbus. And another random table with more stuff. I keep my sunglasses here. Not as much as Fulmer 4 Tech, but I am, in, I am into sunglasses a little bit. I've got an old pair of the Oakley uh, Gas Can S polarized some black iridium, those are nice, I don't wear them a whole lot, but they are great. Then my new favorite pair, the Oakley Radar Range, polarized, I actually had these customized over the summer with the carbon fiber lenses. I had uh, my car, the BMW triple forward slash M5 etched in the lens. Real nice, real nice glasses, I love them, they're a little expensive. Those were about 190 I think, and these were just over 300 So, um, Oakleys, I love them, but definitely a little pricey. On the coffee table there in front of the couch, I've got a whole bunch more BMW stuff. We'll come over to the side, get a better look. A lot of this stuff I got having the car serviced while I was waiting there. I just, uh, I think that was Dave Walter, BMW in Akron, Ohio. I've got the lifestyle thing here. They have a lot of cool stuff in here, some of which I've got. Lots of hats, stuff I've looked through. Nice watches in there, too. Pre-owned vehicles, stuff like that. And then BMW sent me some mailings with gift cards and stuff, good for service for the holidays, so I've kept those laying around. And then down below I have BMW magazines uh, that my friend gave me, the KRVR, once again, there's the 335 Injected Sport, 650 horsepower, not too bad. 
Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. In the next few days, we're going to be taking a look at my media room setup. Might give you a sneak preview at the end of this video. We've got a pretty decent TV in there. Apple TV, Blu-ray player, DVD. Everything's in there. Nice speakers, surround. And I had a couple requests for that. But this has been the uh, Ryan Nose Tech Enterprise Tour of 2011. Everything you see in here is subject to change. Our website, techinform.us. My personal Twitter is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. The business Twitter is twitter.com slash techinformus. And then catch us live every Tuesday night, except tomorrow night. We have exams this week starting tomorrow. I'm going to start studying in about 30 minutes after this has been compiled. And uh, probably not going to be around tomorrow night. But follow my Twitter, again, twitter.com slash James R. Schultz for information. But usually, on Tuesday nights, we'd be live from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Ustream.tv slash user slash tech inform us. Thanks so much for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in Tuesday's video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.